Something happened on November 3rd, 2022. The online Godzilla fan community did something it hadn't done in a long time. It went full Gorilla Whale. Godzilla Day was busy. We're finally getting SH Monster Arts show a guy get. We were treated to a freaking awesome live action Godzilla vs. Gigan short that marked the 50th anniversary of Godzilla vs. Gigan. The Bagan suit from Godzibon made an appearance, and there was a kaiju shattering announcement of a new full length Toho Godzilla movie coming November 3rd, 2023. Oh, and it's being directed by Takashi Yamazaki, one of my favorite filmmakers. Godzilla fans are eating well. But what stole the show was this incredible nine minute short film called Godzilla vs. Gigan Rex. Aside from a few previews, I went in completely blind. I had no idea what to expect. Like, was Godzilla fighting a giant Tyrannosaurus Rex with Gigan arms? Or Gigan with T-Rex arms? Hmm? On the official Godzilla YouTube channel, several thousand fans watched the live streaming debut of this movie. And it blew me away. Speaking as a motion graphics artist, it is always a win to see a fellow creator make something extraordinary. Godzilla vs. Gigan Rex sports amazing visuals and creature designs. With very little human involvement, the story is left in the hands of its giant stars, and it, for the most part, excels. The set designs and sequences sported nifty aesthetics. I loved the camera work and how open world everything felt. Some of the cutaways were awkwardly timed to the point where it temporarily took me out of the action. The Gigan designs initially took some getting used to, but by the time Gigan Rex took center stage, I was hooked. Still, there's something unusual about how the clunky Gigans moved swiftly around like gymnasts. I'm torn between liking it because it feels very alien, which was probably intentional, to, well, this looks off. A chill shot up my spine when Gigan's armies, uh, the all the Gigans, their buzzsaws just popped right out. Like, holy Cthulhu, that was terrifying. Uh, <laughs> speaking of scary, let's talk about Gigan Rex. Gigan Rex marks the first time where I thought Gigan was intimidating. Looks aside, Gigan never felt like an existential threat to me. But Gigan Rex both looked the part and made things instantly dire. I loved Gigan Rex's look, abilities, and its cosmic horror vibes. While I'm happy the film never gave us any backstory on Gigan the Red, I am curious. Did it create the other Gigans? How many are there? Is Gigan Rex the true leader, or does it too have a master? Gigan Rex is a refreshing take on one of Toho's most iconic yet underutilized kaiju. Speaking of iconic kaiju, I loved Godzilla's depiction. Like his Heisei forebear, Godzilla's design is both fearsome and expressive. The way this Godzilla moved and fought off the Gigan Horde was awe-inspiring. Also, Godzilla's spines looked like legit spines. Moreover, Godzilla's Ultra Instinct transformation stole the show. While Godzilla's iconic atomic breath will always be blue in my heart, it was a nice touch making it ghostly white. This whole fantastic sequence elevated what was already an enjoyable viewing experience into the upper strata of everything I love about the kaiju genre. But here's what makes this movie great. 
The opening narration, which Mickey Sagusa herself voiced, heavily implies this film is a direct sequel to 1995's Godzilla vs. Destroya, making it a continuation of the Heisei Godzilla series. Now, at first, it just seemed like a creative homage. But then the use of familiar sounding music and visuals firmly cemented this Godzilla as being none other than a fully grown Godzilla Jr. Do you know what this means? First, it means we celebrate there being a Heisei Gigan. Two, in fact. <laughs> Better late than never. The Heisei Godzilla series lives again. I never thought I'd see the day. Godzilla Jr. is back and is a chip off the old block. Seriously, his dad would be proud. Furthermore, this opens the door to other Godzilla continuities and standalone films making a comeback, like GMK, the Kiryu duology, the show era, post destroy all monsters, etc., etc. We could also see lost projects like Godzilla vs. the Gargantuas, Ghost Godzilla, a Bagan story, <laughs> oh, or maybe Godzilla vs. Batman. Come on, we all want to see it. But do you know what really made this movie so damn good? But do you really want to know what made this movie so damn good? It's because it gave us something Godzilla vs. Destroya left wanting. Something I never knew I needed until now. It brought closure to Godzilla Jr.'s story. Don't get me wrong, G vs. D's ending is great. It's easily one of the best endings to a Godzilla film. But one of the best things the Heisei Godzilla series ever did was revitalize the Son of Godzilla character. As audience members, we were there with Junior from the beginning. We were there when he was born, we were with him when Godzilla adopted him, and tragically, we were there when he died at the hands of a true monster. And while the silhouette of a fully grown Godzilla standing tall helped alleviate the sadness somewhat, it didn't conclude Junior's story. Like many fans, I wanted to see more. I wanted to see future adventures of Junior saving the Earth from new threats. I wanted to see Junior truly succeed his father. I wanted to see the Prince of Monsters become the King of the Monsters. And this short film did precisely that. Junior finally gets a chance to prove to the world that he is his father's son. Long live the Ascended King. If you're interested in watching this movie, there's a link in the description box down below. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button. It'll really help my channel grow. Don't forget to subscribe to Kaijutopia, and I'll see you again soon.